God. It don't matter how much uh, word we have, how many times we go down in the water, but if we do not obey and live in the spirit of God, then we are not of him. When he come back to get us, he will not find us because we will have iniquity on the inside because we have not pulled ourselves away from our carnality. Once you get saved and baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, that is not the end, that is not your destination. We are called to become mature in Christ. That means that we got to stop lying, we got to stop stealing, we got to stop cheating, we got to stop the fornication, we got to stop the adultery, we got to expose sin where it is. We cannot think that, you know, we can just sin and live any kind of way and come in here and shout it off. Because it's not going to shout off. You got the blood of Jesus to wash it off, but you got to repent. That's what our lesson is talking about on Sunday. A very good lesson is coming up on Sunday talking about repent. A repent is not a one-time thing. Repent is a daily thing. Daily we sin. Daily we need to repent. And when you can go back and keep doing the same old thing over and over and over again, guess what? You have not repented. When you know that you have not repented, then you know what you got to do? You got to lay on your face. You got to cry out to God. You got to seek Him. You got to knock. He said, seek, knock. The door will be open. And the way you do that, you got to pray, call out to the Lord. Lord, have mercy on me. I can't do this thing. I can't put this can't help it away. The church, I be up in San Antonio. You know what? The church, the body of Christ is just one body. You know, we got sin down here in Compass Code. We got sin up there in San Antonio. The church is infected because Yes, we are saved. Jesus said we are his people. Then he said, he said, my people, which are called by my name. That's right, that's right. And they humble themselves and pray and turn on them. Gonna, we got wicked ways. God do not like our wicked ways. He wants to turn away from them. He's not pleased with the wickedness that we have in us. And he's a very gentle, loving God. He's not going to force us to put our wickedness away. We got to lay it aside. It is a choice. He's not going to make us stop doing anything. He's going to see, just put the word right before us. Choose you this day who you will serve. He said, I set before you life and death. Choose life. And we act like it's so hard to stop sinning. We act like we just can't stop it. It is not that hard to stop sinning if you are born again. Now, before you are born again, yes, it might be hard. Because we don't have to do this thing by ourselves. We got the Holy Ghost. We got the power of God on the inside. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, whatever you need, call on me. I will help you. He said, cast all your cares upon me and I will care for you. We don't have to do this thing alone. But we don't want to get rid of no sin. We enjoy it. As long as we can jump up and shout, we think it's all right. Jump up and shout and go home and sin some more. God is not pleased with that. And we don't even know how to repent no more. We don't know how to repent. You know, when, you know, back in the olden days when they repented, you know, repenting always brings forth some some um, sorrow, yes, yes. some um, tears, yes. some conviction. Yes. When people sin now, they act like they ain't got no conviction. They don't act like sin even till they get sin and just step on them like it's another day. Don't think nothing about it. I know when I commit sin, I know back in South Carolina, you know, I did something just committing a big old sin. I felt so bad every time I went to church, I was just boohooing and crying. Snot all running on my nose, you know, the pastor was like, oh boy, look at Sister Daisy, she's really, and I was just saying, Lord, have mercy on me. I wasn't crying because I was happy, I was crying because I was sin sick. And I kept on crying out to the Lord, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, forgive me, Lord God. I sinned against you, Lord. My soul was hurting. You 
know why? Because Jesus loved me so much. He loved me so much and he gave his love and put it in my heart. And I had the audacity to cheat on him. Went back to the devil. Started doing the things that God told me not to do. And then he was still, you know, I felt like God was just looking at me, shaking his head. All I did for you. I kept your mind. You were going crazy. I saved you. I picked you up out the muck and the barrel. And you went back over there to that old joker. I felt bad because I had cheated on God. And I cried out to him. No wonder David pinned. I cried out to the Lord and he heard me. You know when David sinned, David, he was feeling mighty bad. He wasn't just like, oh boy, I'm king, I sinned. I'm sorry, Lord. No, no, no. When you sin, you're going to have some remorse in you. You're not going to just sin and just get up and like nothing ain't happened. You know, ain't nobody going to have to sit you down. You're going to sit yourself down. You know, I didn't even get up and preach. I was like, Pastor, no, no, no. I didn't even tell that like you're like, oh, so that, no, 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 Pastor, don't, please don't put me up. I ain't worth it to stand up there. Because there should be some repentance. <laughs> and being sorry. People should be sorry if they get caught. They don't be sorry for to repent of it. They sorry because they got caught. If they never got caught, they would never be sorry. That's right, that's right, that's right. Because you know what? Because we don't stop talking about sin. We talk about money. We talk about health. We talk about praising, enjoying Jesus. But we never talk about sin like we need to. We don't talk about if you don't stop your sin and I don't care if you ever been baptized in Jesus' name, given hold up, you ain't going nowhere. We even got that in the Sunday school lesson talking about a righteous man, a righteous man sin. You ain't a wicked man would get that for you, Will. That's why the Bible said that many is gonna be saying, Lord, Lord. Have we not cast out demons and devils in your name? He gonna say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Some of our best preachers, some of our best pastors, some of our best teachers, some of the best of the best. You might be surprised. Because God do not like sin. And he do not like for you to cover it up. Sin needs to be exposed. And if it's in you, and if it's in me, I need to expose the sin that's in me. Because as long as that sin is covered, the devil has something on your head. And I just give God all the glory and the praise because, you know, you can get that out of you through fasting. If you fast, God will show you yourself. And he will give you grace. And he will give you mercy because he loved you that way. He do not want us to be condemned. He do not want us to perish. That's why he said, if you sin, come boldly to the throne of grace. He's willing and waiting to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you know, all the young people, we have young people that need the Holy Ghost. In the old days, we used to put the young children on a fast. Yes. Because they be having sin in their life too. They don't want to let go. They don't want to repent. They don't want to stop doing what they're doing. We used to put them on a fast. And say, so you want the Holy Ghost, you know, you don't have to show God to serious that you don't want the Holy Ghost. Put them on a fast and pray with them. But they just come to church, you know, and do what we do, dance and shout and go back home. But we got to get serious about these things because we need the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It's not enough just to repent. Right. Repenting is very, very important. It's very powerful. Yes, but if you repent, yes. and I believe that so many do, yes. but if you do not get the Holy Ghost, then you just open for the devil. Yes. 